garden. Since okay. you've not experienced uh, what is family constellation, and since we are only me and you here, so I'm going to explain it in a bit detail. First, let me let me um, start with um, uh, the topic of today webinar. Right, webinar mm -hmm. is about a career and success related to family constellation. So how? Can you look at your success story in your career, in your professional life from a point of view of your family? Okay, so now when we say usually success, what comes to our mind is how much money we are generating, for example, how much uh, popularity we have in the field that we're working or what's our reputation. Mm -hmm. So this is how you map your success or what's your designation. Mm -hmm how much you have risen in your company or um, maybe how much satisfaction you get internally or how much fulfilled mm -hmm. you are. What passion do you have? Yeah, is there a passion driven to do? Do you love to do what you're doing? Do you get, mm -hmm. uh, you know, happiness from what you're doing? Now, these are the things how you would uh, basically evaluate your success. Isn't it? Yes. Now, now uh, uh, some of the things that I've mentioned here are related to your external world. External means that anybody, let's say your loved ones, your friends, will look at you and say, yes, Sabrina is really successful based on, let's say, your wealth or your designation, your reputation, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's, it's visible to other people. But what's happening inside you, how fulfilled you are, how satisfied you are, probably you can mask it and not show others that you are miserable mm -hmm. but you're still working in a, in a given situation, mm -hmm. right? So what the family constellation we're considering for your success story in times when you are not happy, okay? Whether it's external or internal. You can mm -hmm. say that, yes, I love to do what I'm doing. Of course, I'm enjoying, but... I feel I'm not appreciated enough or I'm not acknowledged enough. So then it means that you are not happy with your success. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not getting, let's say, money and reputation and popularity because you are into a field that you are doing for yourself, let's say you are doing some reading, some learning, and uh, that's what gives you a joy and fulfillment, you are still okay because you you feel that you are much better today than you were yesterday and then you are one month ago, right? So anytime people are happy with their successes, we are not talking about them, right? We are only talking mm -hmm. and considering their positions with regard with the relationship to their success based on when they are unfulfilled in some way or the other, okay? Now, for example, uh, two days ago, I think three days ago, I had one client who came from one of the republics of uh, USSR, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that I self-sabotage myself and that's why I'm here. So I said, in what ways do you self-sabotage yourself? So she's saying I have a lot of passion about she was into the well-being and healing and, you know, spirituality and she's mm -hmm. doing a lot modalities and she's learning and she has already learned so there's a lot of competence in her and plus on top of that she's actually influencer so she mm -hmm. has this beautiful opportunity to market herself to speak about what she does to her uh, followers and she's saying when it uh, when time comes you know I sit and I said okay let me now sit down and create a workshop boom, I'll just bring up something else. I'll say, let me clean the house. Let me do this. Let me talk to one friend. Let me go out. So she's saying, I create reasons just not to sit. And I recognize, because she's very aware, she has been into this journey for a long time. She says, I recognize that I self-sabotage myself. And when I go back, she's saying, so she, she was um, aware about how her family and probably childhood could be, affecting her success story so she says when i go back i've never seen ambition i don't know i never knew what ambition was i've never seen such people because i don't know how much you know about ussr but i belong to one of the republics as well to in ussr mm -hmm. 
I grew up in this regime and uh, there was no ambition, like ambition was killed. Nobody wanted you to be ambitious. Nobody wanted you to have passion and, you know, follow your dreams. There was only one dream, the USSR dream, and you had to follow mm -hmm. that. Right? So she said, when I was 20, I just escaped and I came to Dubai. Now, she has got this huge opportunity completely like 180 degree jump from that republic to here in in uh, mm -hmm. uae where it's a land of opportunity right and everybody mm -hmm. look around it's a it's a country of young people country of ambitious people people who want to achieve their dreams and they come here and they actually actualize it so and she's one of them as well so she got this ambition but there is still self-sabotage so now I want to take you on to this journey. And uh, Sarah has also joined. Hi, Sarah. Um, on this journey, so how do we uh, resolve our blocks in our success, in our career, based on family constellation and based on our understanding of our family roots and dynamics from our childhood? or even unconsciously, okay? Now, when we see ourselves self-sabotaging and not uh, allowing to grow, not basically running away from success, the good question to ask is, who was in my family? Was there anyone who could achieve her or his dreams? You know? Now, this someone could be your parent, Let's say your mother dreamt to become a doctor, but could never do that because she had then children, she got married, and it was very difficult to follow studies or any other, any other profession for that matter. Uh, so who is there in the family who could fulfill their dreams professionally? Either it's your parents, or it could be sibling, one of the siblings of your parents, or it could be grandparents or siblings of your grandparents. It could be your own siblings. Let's say when siblings cannot follow their dreams and take actions toward in their career because of sickness, yeah? They are suffering mm -hmm. from something. They can't go to university. And uh, this becomes a block for us because Though we have all the resources, we have right education, we are in the right country, there is enough opportunity. And even if we have money to invest, we are competent in, in our field, but something of the other will come up. We kind of create a situation that you will, we will not allow ourselves to the success because of love and loyalty to that person who couldn't do it. Okay. Now, thing is um, that sometimes we know who this person is and we are entangled. So if it's our parent, we know. So we grew up in a family where we saw that our mother kind of lived through us, like her dreams she, she saw in us. Mm -hmm. And other times we don't even know. We don't even know these people. We don't even know. Or even if we know the people, let's say your father had some dream which he never ever shared with anyone because he couldn't follow that dream and he had to provide for the family, for his wife, for his children. And he let go his hobby or whatever field he wanted to go because that field wouldn't support him financially. And he has never mentioned it to anyone, but unconsciously you pick it up. As a child, you pick it up. And now out of love and loyalty, you follow your father and you say, Father, if you couldn't do it, I will not do it. And I'll make mm -hmm. sure I'm not more than you or I'm not happier than you or I have more than you. So we try to honor our family and our loved ones and we want to be just like them. Otherwise, we feel guilty. If we have more, we feel guilty. So this is one of the ways how you, you can, if, if this is something that bothers you, and there are others also. So Neha has joined us now. So basically, it's Sabrina, Neha, Sarah. Uh, so if any of you uh, 
have this self sabotage and you are you are thinking that you are not utilizing your potential fully completely then probably it's a good uh, time to you know reflect on your family like close your eyes and kind of bring everyone who belongs to your system who belongs to your system it's immediate family first of all so which means your siblings and your parents then it's siblings and the parents of your parents so your grandparents and your aunts and uncles from both sides mm -hmm. right and it goes then beyond them your great grandparents as well right so one of the ways is to self sabotage when we are loyal to somebody okay uh, now, um, many a times I get clients who have an issue with, um, let's say, a uh, boss or somebody who is in an authority and they can't take orders, for example, they get irritated that someone has to tell them what to do. Or sometimes they say that I can't even believe that he's in that position. He's so incapable or he's so stupid, right? He doesn't have experience. Mm -hmm. He has reached there only because he has been friends to someone or so you hear a lot of lot of time people come you know complaining about this so problem with authority also goes back to our childhood and uh, many times when we see people who have been dominated in their childhood as a as a children as as somebody who is small and because you are smaller you cannot argue you cannot criticize anyone and you cannot change those rules you can't break the rules so if this is the situation you have been suppressed with now you develop a negative um, relationship with someone in a power okay yes. and uh, the other day, um, I was having a lunch with one of my friends who is also a trained in family constellation. And it was quite funny when she said she just got a new job and she says that I can't believe that I have manifested my boss copy of my father. So she's saying the boss is much younger than my father, like maybe 20, 30 years younger than father, but he's copy of him to the extent that he has got similar issues in his physical body. She says, my father used to have a neck pain and he would wear that mm -hmm. support, you know, for the neck. And yeah. he also wears the same support. And he's exactly just like my father. So when you experience in your childhood something like that, then this issue appears. So right now, is there anyone like uh, Sabrina Nehasara? Hi, guys. You can also... Um, Unmute yourselves and participate. Let's be have this interactive session. Uh, do you experience ever um, problems with authority? Any one of you? Hi. Uh, yes, I'm Neha, and yes, I have this fear of authority. And um, earlier also, someone told me, she's a like hypnotherapist also, that I have got this fear of authority, and I don't feel that authority supports me. And in my childhood experience also, I was, um, I have some experiences that leads to that belief. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Neha, for sharing. Yes, so, um, I mean, everybody experiences differently, right? Some people say that my boss is really nice, but I'm so shy. Like, I can't share my, my thoughts and my opinions. I'm really shy. Some people say that I'm scared. I don't want to even open my mouth. I'm, I'm terrified. Some people say, you know, he's just stupid and I don't want to take orders from him and I don't want to consider his opinions because I don't think he's professional enough, right? So it's a very different situation, but the deep core is the same, that you do not accept authority. You want to basically look away from, from authority. Now, uh, Neha, may I invite you and others as well, like if you if you have similar situations, even if, even if once you have experienced some, something like this, like to probably just close your eyes and take few breaths just to kind of let go and relax whatever is on your mind right now. 
and, and uh, you just, uh, just mute your mic, please, because there are background sounds. Yes, thank you. So just take a few breaths and just breathe out all the stress, all the tension and kind of allow yourself to relax. And you can mentally also tell yourself to let go and relax. And then I want you to just be aware of the room where you are in right now. And if the room is a little bit smaller, just, just extend it, make it really spacious, like a big, spacious, brightly lit room. And then imagine this person enters your room with your permission, the person, authority, from whom you want to shy away or you don't consider him wise enough or you're scared. Someone that you had issues in the past. And then as soon as this person is in the room, just move around and find your right spot, your right distance. Remember, farther you are from this person, the better you can look at them, better you can observe them. And I want you to just observe this person from a distance, as if today is the first time you saw them. Like observe how they look physically, what's their body language, what are the expressions on their face. And then focus on your body, like what are the feelings and emotions and sensations that you are experiencing when you are observing this guy this person, guy or a girl, doesn't matter. And just breathe out as if you are blowing into a balloon. Just let go of these feelings of this fear and emotions that doesn't allow to accept the person as he or she is. And then go back in times in your mind eye. Who does this person remind you? What comes up in your memory? Who does this person resembles with his behavior? It could be tone of the voice or the words this person uses in conversations, or it could be even the way they walk, or what are the gestures, or any other behavior. And allow that person to enter into the room. It could be your parent, your teacher, your grandparent, or anyone else. And tell this person, you are my father, or you are my mother, or you are my teacher, who have I entered? And I'm just child. And I feel that all those feelings of fear or shyness or anger or resentment belongs to this child. So tell this person, you are bigger than me. I'm just the child. And that's the truth. Your teacher, your parent, your grandparent is bigger than you. Or even any any 
older sibling, for example, sometimes there is a sibling rivalry going on and, you know, older one kind of bullies younger one. So if this is the case, just say you're a bigger one. I'm younger one, I'm a child. And now look at the other authority, your boss or from, from the adult life and tell that person, I'm grown up now. And see what happens moment you say I'm grown up and you are facing your boss. Now huh? see what happens. Suddenly you feel you're a completely different person. And then again, you, you want to kind of have this anchor in your body, like being a child. So turn towards your parents and feel like small little child. And then as soon as you turn towards the authority figure from your current adult life and say, I'm grown up now. I'm not a child here, I'm grown up, I'm adult. And just notice the shift that happens inside your body with the awareness. How different are you? How different are you feeling and experiencing yourself being an adult versus being a child? And then you can open your eyes and give me the feedback how you felt. Can I say I'm Neha? Yes, yes, Neha. Yeah, it was like a brilliant session. Thank you so much for doing this. And in the first place, uh, when you said see an authority figure, I saw my father because I, had, I am unable to forgive him as a... Um, he was not, I feel like um, I didn't receive any love and anything like financial, if you say money or care when I was a child. And now also he's unable to provide that. So I figured him. And when you said in the end that now I'm an adult, I could see that to the company head, I was, I was feeling very confident and uh, strong and I said that you can't talk to me in that way because I'm an adult and the whole uh, my physical body appearance like I was that standing tall and walking very confidently so that changed and okay. I could see that still I am that inner child who is hurt and who didn't receive well from his father and that leading to I didn't have a relationship till yet Hmm, hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Neha, for sharing. However, there are still a few things that um, I want to bring your uh, awareness to. We had a conversation today somewhere in the daytime, right? We had a uh, free consult, Neha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I remember the reason why I told you to join this because your intention was to work on your blocks in your career, right? Yeah. So... Uh, you need to focus on that relationship with your father that you just mentioned and something like you said, which is, um, which is not um, very helpful, uh, that I can't forgive my father. I rather uh, want to focus on the life he gave you. Okay, so I want you to focus on things or people that you love in your life, your friends, your loved ones. And anything that you enjoy in your life, be it a food or music or dance or anything for that matter, whatever you love in your life. And imagine all of that experience you have because your father gave you life and this is truth. Yeah. Okay, so start, start from there and let's see what it brings. Okay? Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, anybody else, Sabrina? Did you do exercise? Yes. yes, I did the exercise and I saw like uh, from the beginning, I saw my father too. 
Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we see that um, you know the dominance comes usually from our parents. And, um, you know, sometimes as an adult, when you look back, whatever they did wasn't dominance at all. But in that age, when we're experiencing it, because we, we don't have any way to uh, protest, this, mm -hmm. creates, this creates the self-sabotage later in life, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now... Another thing that comes up in, uh, in blocking yourself from the success is opposite of authority. Opposite of authority. So one thing is that you are perceiving somebody as an authority. However, in a, in a career, sometimes you are the authority, right? You are positioned in a space where you have to become an authority. So how do you act when you have that power? So when you are a leader in the company, what do you do? So do you have those leadership qualities that is required? Or do you become an authority that we just dealt with in this exercise? Okay. Now, how do we learn what kind of leader we are going to be or what kind of people we are going to be when we have a power and responsibility is again observing two people in our life if, if we grew up in a family of both the parents there are leaders there are authorities so the way we behave not only at the work even at home with our own children right sometimes you will you know if you have children you might catch yourself up behaving exactly the way your parent behaved and you disliked it and we, we copy their behaviors. Have you ever experienced? You yes, have... so true. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, a, I feel, I don't know, I feel like I'm acting this way, but I don't like it. Yeah, you don't like it. Yes. So when, when you observe your parents behaving like this, you don't like it. And then after many years, you end up being just like your parent. Because that's the leader inside you. That's the authority figure inside you. And the same way you are going to act at your workplace. And by doing so, you might kind of stop your success. And people who have this issue, they say, I'm not in charge. I'm not in control. I'm aware what I'm doing, but I just cannot stop. Okay, so these are the things because when we say success, like family constellation doesn't come to the mind. When you want more success, where do you go? You go to business coach or you go to life coach because they are going to coach. They're going to help you identify your goals. They are going to help you, you know, create the roadmap, of how, what actions you will take, uh, how accountable you are going to be, how responsible you are going to be. How do you, uh, you know, check on yourself? what you are doing. So immediately coaching comes to your mind. However, no matter how much you coach, if, if roots are in the family and if this is what is blocking your success, coaching cannot help you. So these are the situations. So they say that I'm aware. With coaching, you become aware, yes, that this is what you are doing and this is the behavior which is absolutely unacceptable at the workplace. But when... When time comes and you have to change and do something else, you do have a reminder as well, but you are just not in control. You are not in charge. And this happens when we are kind of entangled with somebody else in our family. And in this case, entangled, I'm saying when I'm acting just like my father or I'm acting just like my mother. And you know what is the key word here and the, the thing of healing is the more you reject your parent, more you follow them. So if you keep saying that my mother had this annoying behavior and I hate her for that or I don't accept it or what Neha just said, you know, that and I don't want to accept these things from my father, more you end up being like him. Okay, so there is a healing which is required to be done. And they, in, in a nutshell, of course, I can't, you know, go on in this one hour seminar about 
all of the steps, but I keep doing different seminars with different topics of follow up. Uh, you need to heal and open your heart to what your mom and what your dad gave you, which is the life, which is the, the, the best gift or the biggest gift, I would say, you have ever received. So this has to allow you to heal your relationship and heal your heart, basically, to open your heart to, to receive the energies from both of your parents. Okay, and when you do that, you will clearly identify unacceptable behavior. You know, you know what is the unacceptable behavior from each one of them. And this behavior belongs to them and you don't have to take it. But what you need to take is the love and blessing and the life that they give you, right? Now, sometimes um, there are people who say that no matter how much I do at workplace, I do, you know, a job of 10 people and I'm not appreciated. Nobody even notices it. And they feel really, really bad, sad, angry, frustrated, miserable about it. Okay, so they do a lot and it just goes unnoticed, completely unappreciated and unnoticed. Now, what could be possible reason for this that we can relate to our family? As children, we take responsibilities when our parents are not behaving like grown-ups. Okay, we call it like parentification. When child becomes a parent, have you seen anyone like this or have you experienced it in your own family? When you have to step up, you have to take responsibility and if you don't, parents are just not able to do it. And I'm not talking only financial thing, not at all. I'm talking about Let's say if, if mother is depressed or mother is sad and then you have to be there for her, you have to, or just sick and you have to be there to pacify her and to take charge and probably look after your younger siblings or household things. And, and then it's appreciated, of course, you know, they appreciate that you are so sincere and you are so focused and responsible and capable. And then you begin to get used to it. You begin to get used to these appreciations as well. You get used to responsibilities and carrying them out so well. And as an adult, then what you want is you want to take every responsibility in your work on yourself and say, I'll do it. Don't worry, I'll do it. This also I'll do, that also I'll do. And you just become burdened of, you know, all of these responsibilities which you chose. Nobody actually gave it to you. And there is a reason why you are choosing because you have been doing it from childhood. And that's the way you appreciate yourself. So in the family, you could be getting all those thank yous and good girl and wonderful girl and what a wise girl and such a nice girl and all of those comments. But at work, you might not get it. And then this, this, responsibility is too much it's time consuming it's tiring and you're completely com depleted of the energy and you're not tired of uh, the situation so if you are experiencing any of these symptoms then again best thing is to go back into childhood and do this very similar exercise that we did i won't repeat it right now where you become small you become small and you tell your parents in your imagination that you are bigger ones. I can't do it. I'm just your child. So you are big and you can do it. You are big and you can carry your disease. You are big and you can carry your guilt. You are big and you can manage your situation. I cannot. I'm just a child. And immediately it it frees you from this burden that you are carrying on your heart. And then deep desire that I have to carry more, I have to carry more. If I don't, then it won't happen, okay? So this is called like going back to your position where you belong in your system. 
stepping down into your size, whatever is appropriate size for you. And the last one uh, that uh, I had here uh, was, you know, like having a uh, lot of stress, a lot of uh, restlessness and anxiety, like constantly being anxious, not for one particular reason, not because you have to present something in your, in your work or because you have to meet somebody or you have some projects that you have to make or some, you know, deadlines you have to meet. Not only those times. See, those times everybody is anxious, more or less, okay? There is a degree of anxiety and we say that some amount of anxiety is good because that kind of keep, keeps us on the track and we take action and we learn and we get ready and prepared and that's how we succeed, right? But I'm saying about the anxiety which is constant without any particular reason constantly stressed, constantly anxious, constantly irritated or restless. So if that happens and you say, I don't know why, like everything is going fine. My promotions are there, you know, I'm earning good money and uh, you know, I, I'm in a very good position. I'm learning a lot. Everyone loves me. They appreciate me, but I don't know where this is coming from. It's totally unnecessary. This is how they express. So in family constellation, when we observe these dynamics into the stress and the client, and then later I'm going to ask you if anybody observed family constellation or I'm going to share how it is done. So what we observe is that there is some kind of a stress that has happened in the childhood, in the family. Either it's a losing of someone or very, very painful fate of someone in the family, losing someone to death, someone dying, it could be sibling of the client, you know, lost children through miscarriages, for example. Client might not even know that mother had a miscarriage and this constant stress and anxiety is there and they are carrying it with themselves. Or it could be any misfortune that has happened with anyone in the family, let's say grandfather died in the war or somebody lost the property during the war and their lifestyle has changed or they are refugees or, you know, situations like this, which is an extremely stressful situation, back into the roots, which is the family. And now client unconsciously is carrying all that anxiety with them. So these are the blocks that I wanted to speak about today, which uh, we examine when client comes with block with regards to success. Okay. Now I want to ask um, Neha. Neha, have you ever experienced family constellation? Uh, no, I haven't. You have? This is the first time. Yeah. Okay. So even Sabrina has never experienced it. So now let me explain how family constellation is done. Like if you opt for, let's say, one-on-one -on -one session or the group session. Now let's start with the group because primarily family constellation is done in the group. So we have, let's say around 15 people in one constellation, in one uh, workshop. It's a one day workshop that starts at 10 and will mm -hmm. finish by six o'clock. And uh, each person, let's say 10 people out of this 15 are clients, which means each one of them come there with some question, with some issue that they want to resolve, okay? Now, let's say, Neha, if you are a client and you came for this workshop, so you will get the chance to constellate your fam family or constellate your issue, let's put it this way, right? So you share your issue either in front of the group of people or if you don't want to talk in front of people, you can ask facilitator, can we step out and I would like to share issue with you. After that, facilitator, will choose uh, representatives for your constellation. So you are not participating directly in your constellation. You are just sitting on a side and observing other people that you chose as Neha 
and let's say as a blog and let's say as success. Let's say I told you that three people and how we are going to constellate with three people. So then you will go out of this and ask someone, will you be part of my constellation? Okay. And when they agree, you are going to put them into the space, into the room, however you like. So somebody is looking, let's say, towards that corner, another person is looking at this person, and third person is looking elsewhere, like that, however you like. And after that, I will ask you to sit and observe. And the people you chose, they begin to sense, kind of channelize the sensations that they have the moment they stood on that place that you, you gave to them, you assigned to them. And then I ask them how they feel, what they sense, and through these questions, sensations, and the feelings, and feelings towards each other, and changing the positions, the deeper dynamics of that family come up, or the issue come up. Many times we see that this success that we chose, and block that we chose, they become humans. And you might recognize this is my father and this is my grandfather or my mother, right? Sometimes we choose humans. We say, okay, this is Neha and this is Neha's mother and this is Neha's father. Sometimes we tell these people that will you be my father? Will you be my mother? So you will tell them who they are. Sometimes we call it blind constellation where we do not say. We just say, will you be part of my constellation? And most of the times we choose blind constellation. If you as a client spoke a lot about your family in front of the group, we don't want to, um, you know, get any manipulation or any um, so-called, um, uh, we don't want our representatives to get influenced by your story. So if there was a lot sharing, then we keep it blind, okay? And then only in the end, when this constellation kind of moves towards resolution, and it's a solution-based therapy, so when it moves into the resolution, then I will ask you to step into your place and we will request the representative of Neha to go and sit in her place. So now in the resolution, you are going to participate directly to experience it kinesthetically also to feel that spot wherever you need to be and to kind of take all the energies and the entire new image of your family or of your situation whatever we are constellating so this is done in the group it's a life-changing session not only if you are as a client there but even if you become a rep because See, out of 15 people, when it's your constellation, others are supporting you. Others are becoming part of your constellation. Then when it's their constellation, you are going to become part of their constellation. So while being wrapped in and out all day, it's a great healing happening. And even if you are not chosen as a rep and you are sitting and observing because rest of them, three, four, five people would be in the field, but rest of the people are sitting outside and observing the process they're also participating by just being there, being present, right? And they're contributing to this field. And there's a great movement within their soul and great healing. So every constellation, whether you do it for yourself or just be there or participate, is an amazing opportunity to shift and change something in your life, okay? And it's such a beautiful process that I would definitely, definitely advise you to do wherever in the world you are and you see there's a constellation happening just at least once in your lifetime you have to go and observe it's such an amazing process and now what happens in one-on-one -on -one session when we don't have the luxury because this is really a luxury you know that you have 15 people who want to be there all day support each other and do the constellation so we have it once in a month not more than that but uh, we do it on one-on-one. -on -one. Now, what happens if you come for a, for a personal session, then we don't have people. So either we use uh, papers, okay? So we take like papers like this and we put the arrow over there and we number the papers and we put it on the floor. And then instead of people, it becomes either you or me 
who is channeling. So I'm going to mark in my head, if you are going to stand on them, I'll say, okay, number one is Neha, number two is father, and number three is her mother. But I'm not telling you that. So I'm just asking you to place this paper somewhere in the field, and then I will ask you to stand there and tell me how do you sense, what do you sense, how do you feel? Okay, and at the end only when I understand the dynamics, then I will tell you that, okay, Neha, this is you and this is your mother. And, and then there are some lines that I will suggest you to say. If you say that I don't want to channel, can you do it for me? I'm very happy to do it. Then I will give this numbered papers, but I will say you decide who, who is who. So you write down somewhere on the paper, don't tell me. So I'll stand there and I will tell you how I, what I sense and how I feel. Okay, so there are many, many ways to do it. Sometimes we do it with bottles. So we have crystals, we have, you know, whatever is like, we can utilize anything, literally anything on the bottles and we, we, we use it on the, on the tabletop, right? So we put it here and we say, okay, so this is me. And then there's a glass and this is the block and you, you kind of create this constellation. Or oh, there are small little toys that we have. So there are males, females, and babies, and babies also boys, girls. And so we have a special constellation uh, families, toys, with which we constellate it on the table. So there are many, many ways to do it. Uh, result, whether you do one-on-one -on -one session or whether you do it, the group is the is the same, I mean, that shift is brought with the same way, but of course, uh, the experience of group and that group dynamic is really wonderful and you definitely need to experience that for sure. Like, even if you say, I don't know what to constellate and I don't want to constellate anything, you are most welcome to come and just observe, observe how this works and what it is. Yeah. Any questions now? Uh, hello, uh, I have a question. Like uh, when you said like earlier that um, we can go little and we can give just give that responsibility to back to our parents. So I I see that um, I can sense as an adult that my father is not able to take that responsibility. So as a child, when I am imagining and giving back to him so i'm unable to get uh, like give him all back I, I i am feeling that no i need to do this i need to do this i'm unable to hand over him completely so anything you would suggest yeah so so that that is why sometimes it's uh, challenging to do it on your own and then uh, it's better see when you are saying i'm unable to do it that's when you are becoming bigger now you know what, what is uh, very, very helpful here to look at your father and say, you conceived me. Or to look at your mother and say, you carried me for nine months in your tummy. You see, like the, the moment you say these words, then, then you realize that what did I just say? I'm unable to give like you are a baby. You realize you have been created by them. What do you mean you can't give responsibility to your father? You have children, Sabrina, right? Yes, I do, yes. So now, can you imagine your child saying, no, mom, you can't do it. I have to do it for you. I have to carry your disease for you. I have to carry your guilt for you. How will you feel? I was thinking like from the beginning about my kids and I like, for me, it's like impossible, you know? Yes, um, and this is what we do. Yeah. And do our parents like it? They don't like it. They no. don't respectful. Exactly. Yeah, so no matter what disease they have, no matter what uh, bad luck they have, their faith they have, painful one, they can carry it. And that's the dignity. They want their dignity back. We can't do it. Yes, we, we feel bad. We love them. We want them to be happy and healthy and, you know, forever alive. I understand that, but impossible. 
If it was possible, yes, of course, by all means, it's impossible. And then what you are doing, you are giving them even more stress. First of all, you are disrespecting them as if they are unable to carry their own stuff. And then looking at you being miserable, which parent wants that? Every parent just dreams for their children, health and happiness. That's all mm -hmm. we want for our children and our parents want the same thing for us. Okay, so just uh, this, this, I find it very, very helpful personally. Oh, I say that you carried me for nine months. Yeah, that's a very powerful sentence. Or you conceived me, Father, you conceived me, right? So then try and try and see if it helps. Any other question? Now, I just wanted to know actually, like, it takes how long, like, um, takes time to, to heal? Because when I realize all this, like, like right now, so it will change, like, right, like this day, or when it will change? See, uh, when we're talking about uh, change of uh, attitude, it mm -hmm. changes immediately because it's an awareness, right? The moment you are mm -hmm. aware about something, it just changes. It, it cannot go back to what it was. Mm -hmm. Never. So now it's just your choice. It becomes your choice. However, when we are saying that something that has occurred in the family and it's not my my behavior and something needs to be resolved there then during the constellation when resolution mm -hmm. is it doesn't happen always we don't always mm -hmm. need resolution but most of the times when we do change takes time it takes mm -hmm. time for some people it's instantaneous for some people it's week or month or year i don't know but uh, you know, metaphorically, we always say that in a constellation, we kind of touch the finger to the ship and mm -hmm. ship, right? Mm -hmm. So today you might not see the direction moved, but after six months, the ship is not going to land up the place that it was going to, right? Because mm -hmm. small little direction has changed and it's going to create something totally different. Okay. So I can't give you like a timeline. It's not like antibiotic. You take seven day course and infection will go away. <laughs> but yes, yes, it can never be the same, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Today we had a very small group. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, Neha, do you have any questions? No, it was wonderful, like what you advised. And I have been like, uh, been guided when I did the meditation that I need to forgive my parents and also I need now, to heal Please, myself. I beg you once again, please don't say that word for your parents. Don't ever say forgive, okay? Okay. You don't have a position to forgive. They are bigger than you, sweetheart. You are small, right? Yeah. You are small. So... Don't say that. Say I let go. If okay. if they did something wrong, if they if they had some behavior which is unacceptable and wrong, you can say this was unacceptable, it's wrong, and I leave it with you. I leave that behavior also with you, I leave responsibility also with you, and I will walk free from here. Okay. But okay. no forgiveness. No forgiveness. Okay. You are a child, they are a bigger one, you cannot forgive. Okay. You can just let go of the situation. You can just give them the responsibility fully what they've done that you can do. But you need to still try to open your heart to receive what is there to be received. And that's a life. Life comes from your parents to you and then it gives you the opportunity to give it to next generation if you wish to. Right? Yeah. 
So this flow, don't stop this flow because everything depends on this flow. Your health, physical health, how much health you are going to experience. Uh, you know, the, uh, the abundance, your success depends on this. Your relationships with your partners, how much happiness are you going to, how much joy are you going to experience in your romantic relationships depends also on this. So do not stop this energy. Open your heart to receive as much as you can. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, girls, then. Yeah, thank you so much for the class. It was really thank wonderful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you and uh, wish you all the best. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.